Main News Talk and Sports Leader, the Big 870 WWL. And now, WWL on FM at 105.3 is the Garland Robinette Show. To climb inside Garland's think tank, call 504-260-1870 or 866-889-0870. Now, from the heart of New Orleans, here's Garland. Hello, America. Welcome back. It is think tank time. I ought to have some fun this hour. It's the novelty in the early days of television. A novelty not always welcome. When we began ours in 1962, we told our viewers why. And our first editorial went like this. Today, a new voice speaks out in New Orleans. The voice, that of this station, WWL-TV. My name is Phil Johnson. Beginning today and every weekday hereafter, this station will present editorial opinion. A living, vigorous commentary on all things pertaining to New Orleans, its people, and its future. That was Phil Johnson, editorial. For those of you that are 800 years and older, you remember <laughs> Phil Johnson, uh, our editorialist at uh, Channel 4 TV News. Jim Henderson, I'm seeing you in person. I can't believe it. How are you? I'm doing fine, my friend. How are you? Doing all right. Angela Hill, you, you came. I can't, you, it's so nice to see your face. It's so nice to actually be up here as I listen to you all the time. Let me just get it right off the bat. You were doing a phenomenal job. You are the perfect voice at the perfect time that the city needed, now period. That's, that's a scary commentary. No, it? that is the truth. Well, Jim's agreeing with it. I can tell in his eyes. <laughs> I'm glad that you finally found work. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Barnes, what are you doing? You look happy. You got a coat and tie on. You look successful. You didn't retire and actually enjoy it, did you? I did not retire. Incidentally, I want to echo Ank, uh, Angela's words. Uh, I'm still working, doing a lot of consulting work, and I'm also uh, commissioner, as you know, on the uh, South Louisiana Flood Protection Authority. So if we have another storm and the levees don't hold, we can, we're can we coming after you, right? Come after me. I'm their spokesman. Okay, because we always give you trouble on the set anyway, and this is perfect. <laughs> you be, sure did. You know, that this Maybe man we should survived. talk about that. <laughs> he survived 15 years of brutality he on the set. That's he right. He's such a gentleman. Because Henderson... Picked on you on a regular basis. Remember, I'd always defend you. Remember that? You're absolutely right. But what about the time you made it snow? Okay, I don't want to talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> what, what do you remember most, Jim, about those years? Um, well, oh, no, no, let me. What can you talk about that you that, remember the that most? That limits it a great yes, deal more. Yes, yes. I think what I remember the most is all the fun we had and how much, how well we got along. I'd always try to crack you up in commercials so that you come out on a really heavy news story with <laughs> tears running down your face, laughter, and blow whatever sort of credibility you had. At and that remember what you would like. always do. You would look at me and say, you are so unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're all laughing, but this is true. For the people that are listening, uh, best sense of humor probably in the history of the world, and invariably, I, he'd start. And I'd say, don't, don't start. <laughs> don't start. There's a car crash. There's a plane crash. Right. There, there are children kidnapped and, and wherever. And you're going to start. You're going to start with me. And of course, I would lose control. <laughs> and he would not lose control. Angela would not lose control, nor Dave. And then when it was over, he would say to me, you are so unprofessional. <laughs> we had so much fun, though. I think we that's did. what I'll remember more than anything. All the good times we had and all the good people we worked with. I really do think that was um, and is one of the really big things about Channel 4 and about the news department, why it succeeds, is if you're a person really caught up in yourself and it's all about you, you don't last there very long. We've replaced an awful lot of good people, and we I think we've all realized we're all replaceable. That place is so much bigger than all of us. Absolutely. Th that's something I wanted to bring up with Dennis Waltering, if you don't mind relaying this message. Mm -hmm. When I left, I was convinced you people are in trouble. <laughs> okay. We celebrated it. No, no, the house of cards is falling. Yeah, is it? That's, it. that's it. I mean, I, when I walk away, all I can think of is flames. <laughs> and the ratings went up. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's you and Waltering's fault. <laughs> Let me tell you, we are so dad gum lucky to have Dennis Waltering back. Mm -hmm. People, you know, people remember him. That What a phenomenal reporter he was that he did our weekend news for years, then left for 10 years. But how lucky we were to get him back. He is such a professional. He loves this town. He's just a, a pro. And a well, wasn't he in that Michael Vick crew? Pardon? Dennis Walter? Wasn't he part of the Michael Vick crew? 
<laughs> no, maybe not. Maybe no, I, I think you're the I think last you're thinking of the other Dennis Walter. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so many of them out there. No, but I, I agree. I think that um, <laughs> it was huge when you left. It was huge when we lost Bill Elder. Yeah. And, you know, we will all go one day. But the reality is Channel 4 is like an institution that is bigger than than any one person. But what has kept us, I think, together is the fact that anybody who knows television, it's a lot of pressure and it's constant deadlines and it's get it done, get it done and start all over. And it's again. usually a lot of egos. Mm -hmm. And a lot of egos, but it's also a lot of fun. And if you can get along with the people, <laughs> have that comic relief that, mm -hmm. Jim, I will tell you, continue. <laughs> we're not quite as brutal on Carl as we were on Dave. <laughs> Carl was next generation. I love cracking Angela up because tears come into her eyes so fast. And whenever I can get her and she starts tearing up just at one joke, I know I've had No, no, a, but you know what day. happened? I've become hormonal. <laughs> and that's why I cry so often. But see, that works. You can tear up and still uh, report an airplane crash. When you're tearing up and laughing hysterically, it doesn't work. No, no, but I finally learned after 30 odd years, I just, when I start that feeling, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the ratings are going up. Dennis is there. Uh, Dave, what do you remember? I remember those, uh, gourmet meals that we used to have at Wendy's. You remember that? <laughs> Ooh, absolutely. Was there Wendy's then? Because I remember oh, us yeah. hitting, I remember us oh, yeah. hitting rocks together to start fire. <laughs> well, I, I didn't realize that it too. was Wendy's. That too. We, did we have Wendy's at, at yes, our Yes, we did room? on St. Charles uh, Avenue, yes, don't you but, remember? You know, and the irony is, here we are at 1024 North Rampart in Food City of the World. <laughs> That's right. And there was nothing around us to <laughs> Not eat. Not a thing. We and, used to have some of the worst meals in the history of the world. Do you remember when we when I first started, though, there was that little restaurant on the corner, John T's? John oh, T's. Oh, yeah. It's actually oh, yeah. the same building, actually, as the whole complex. Yeah, Lee, Lee Huffman and I have a story that I'll tell when we come back where I saved a lady <laughs> at uh, John <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> Taking a break. They Coming the right Heineken back. Maneuver. That's it. <laughs> Heineken. <laughs> Taking a break. <laughs> WWL New Orleans. All of us, which is really scary at this point in time. Back in there with Angela Hill, Jim Henderson, Dave Barnes, the crew. How, how long did we anchor together? I was there 20 years. You were there 15. 15. So, so we did a good 15, yeah. 20 years mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when Hap Glaudy, they were going to take him off. And we had maybe 30, 40 protesters mm -hmm. outside. And somebody said, we've uh, brought this guy in from the panhandle of Florida, I think. And I was thinking, he is going to get crucified. He's going to last <laughs> two days. You were right. <laughs> you did get crucified, but you lasted. Yeah. That was kind of a tough uh, <clears throat> entry, huh? Well, yeah, I've told that story a number of times when I speak publicly about the, the rigors of broadcasting. The first story we ever covered... Um, Phil Johnson sat me down on the five o'clock newscast set with, with Bill and they took the big studio cameras out to the front on Rampart Street and, um, took the pictures of people who were picketing me. And I had an armed <laughs> guard for the week. The first week I was there, remember we had to walk through the parking lot, still do actually up to the, the news set. And Phil kept looking in the door as I'm doing my sports cast, my first one, I think every five minutes, I think he expected me to go running out in terror on the way back to Atlanta. I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I walked out, turned the corner, and there was an armed guard, and the armed guard escorted me from there up to the set and back for a week, thinking somebody was going to shoot me, and uh, fortunately, nobody did. I tell everybody I was the first person to come to New Orleans to get run over by the welcome wagon. <laughs> <laughs> but it all worked out great, and I really had a lot of confidence that it would. No, but let me do this. Another great Jim Henderson story. You remember, you know, you're nervous, but then you face this crowd that doesn't want you in there. Right. <laughs> and then he plays golf. I think it was with Mr. Early and oh, Mo Gillerman. Where he almost killed the head of Loyal. <laughs> right. And then literally his first shot shanks. It goes into somebody else's golf cart. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was, mean, yeah. it was Father Carter. Jim, it was Father Carter. Yeah, <laughs> it was Father. I was immediately excommunicated. <laughs> that, that's always a bad start. If you kill the head of Loyola, yeah. it's always the job. Especially security. a man of the cloth. <laughs> you know, I think that's where they draw the line. And, but when you yelled at him and said, "Get out of the way," Carter, <laughs> I said four right after it hit him squarely between the eyes. Well, he was thinking Channel Four. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Three on cable. <laughs> <laughs> what is it on UPL? I, oh. oh man. And now I, now I remember why they separated us. <laughs> and now, Angela, you were in Corpus Christi. Right? I was actually in Greater Harlingen, Texas. Like I said, you were in Harlingen, Texas. I was Texas. in Harlingen, Texas. But no, I started in Corpus, but I was working in Harlingen. Does anybody I... live in Harlingen? Yes. 
Harlingen is a wonderful community. How big it really is, that? is. Uh, it's the whole area, the greater, um, lower Rio Grande Valley. Okay, so, so it's 13 Harlingen. people in Harlingen, right. Brownsville. But a big, big And when area. I left, there were 12, then there was Brownsville, McAllen. <laughs> right. So it was a whole huge area at, right at the very tip of, uh, Texas. And, uh, this man from New Orleans, uh, had seen me and called Mr. Early, who had an ad agency, and he said, look, if you're looking for a female in 1970, whatever, uh, you might consider her. And those were the days of, Oh, well, call and send me a tape. Well, I couldn't. These were film days. <laughs> I didn't know how to put film to tape. You're expecting a lot. Well, they kept calling. And finally, uh, Phil Johnson called and said, you know what? We're going to fly you up. And that was it. So it, they flew me up. I love the station. I love the philosophy. I love the idea that, you know, if if I had seen myself on the steps of the White House, one day a correspondent, <coughs> I wanted to travel. In fact, this station let me travel. Mm. And to do all the things that you really wanted to do. We were so lucky to live in that era. Mm. So lucky. Now, Dave, you were with the Meteorological Service, right? I was with the Old Weather Bureau and then the National Weather Service uh, for some 25 years. And I'd done a lot of radio. The old, in the old days at the Weather Bureau offices, we used to do uh, radio broadcasts uh, for weather right there. And so I'd done that for quite a bit. And, of course, uh, I got a call one night. Uh, back in, uh, I think it was, uh, 81 and later in 83, uh, to consider going on air. And of course I said right away, Alec Gifford actually was the one at Channel 6 that first called me. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I did a few weekends down there and they liked it. They offered me a contract. And just as I was about to sign, I read the newspaper. Nash was retiring. I said, sorry, no. Alec. <laughs> and so I ended up in four. Were you drinking when you made that decision? <laughs> I, mean, I was, it was thinking me about and it, Jim. Well, I know. Angela, I can understand. I know, that. I know. I watched a few of the um, shows, and I almost backed out, but I decided to be brave. You probably you... watched those shows and figured I can do better than that. <laughs> but you know, Dave truly is the consummate gentleman, and I mean that. Today and 15 years ago, you you were always a gentleman. So it was a little bit of a culture shock <laughs> to get up on that set. And understand that in those commercials and before the show, and I think he adjusted beautifully, but we have to say, and we won't get specific, we really <laughs> drill him about his personal life. <laughs> and he hand, handled it so well. I, I want to tell you how much I admire him. Well, thank you. And Others I'm, have broken. I'm sorry about the whoopee cushion. Right. Oh, that listen. first night, that's always bothered me. Well, let me tell you. Uh, all right. That's nothing compared to uh, some of the things we can't talk about. Oh, yeah. You're, you're right there. We can write a book on that. Taking a quick break. News time, uh, WWL 105.3 FM, Big 870 AM. Coming right back. Uh, Tune in at four. You still have a 50% chance. And if you're heading out of the... In 1968, the station bought these two full-color mobile vans, almost a small city block in length, and equipped them with six color cameras and two television tape machines. In less than a year's time, this equipment had rolled from Cypress Gardens, Florida, to Detroit, Michigan. It had made commercials in Atlanta, Georgia, and Charlotte and Greensboro, North Carolina, and had broadcast football games from cities as far as Chicago and Denver. While the remote vans moved across the country, the WWL TV studio was undergoing extensive renovations, and by the end of the decade, would become the color production center of the South rivaling the broadcast giants of New York and the West Coast. Do you guys remember those trucks? When when I got there in 1970, I'd come from Homa. I, I didn't come from a small place like you did in Harlem. I came from <laughs> Homa. And, and when I got there, they had these two gigantic remote trucks. And, and I was just in awe of them. And I said, what do you use those for? And they broadcast Kentucky Derby, Golf Indianapolis tournaments. 500. All the major golf tournaments, they did more remotes than CBS. Wow. And right before that, Channel 6 was more powerful, money-wise and everything else, than any network station in the country because the people that owned Sears owned right. Channel mm-hmm. 6. Been a been a very interesting uh, jaunt. One thing that I learned shortly after getting here is that you and I both 
worked for the same man at one time, oh, Denver T. Goodness. Brannon. He owned oh, the station that the station that I own. I worked for in Panama City, and he owned the station you worked for in Homa until I think you sent him to an early grave. <laughs> There's oh, a story there, too, but I don't oh, think you can that, tell that's, that. that. We definitely cannot tell that story. Um, uh, um, well, you, well, no, let's turn the table on you. Yeah. I uh, didn't do it. I tell did, us, you know I didn't do no, it. No, tell us your happiest experience with us. Happiest experience with you three? Huh. Happiest experience. I think Mardi Gras Day when when I I I think I shined more than I ever shined when <laughs> the scumbag Henderson uh pulled out the feather boy. You remember that? You want to tell him about that one? Well, we had just it might have been my first Mardi Gras. I think it was. And uh I think it was the police strike around that time. <laughs> And we're all fried. I mean, we're just on fumes by 10 o'clock <laughs> on Fat Tuesday. We've been up all day and, and then have to come in and do the, the show. So by 10 o'clock, the story leading into sports was about the gay fashion show on Burgundy. And somebody was doing the report about the feather boas and the various costumes. And as they came to sports, I just reached in my pocket and I said, oh, by the way, girl, and the dry cleaners just called. And they're sorry, but your feather boa won't be out until tomorrow. <laughs> and and it was not that funny, believe me. But we were so fried that we just kind of dissolved. But I ran into network people later on where that show had migrated to Chicago and Los Angeles and and uh, New York. And and the thing about it was in the 20 was years I was there, that was the only show I couldn't finish. Remember that? Right. I oh, laughed I so hard that. I couldn't close yeah. it. No. I couldn't stay on the set when we came back. I was in the hallway <laughs> down near the goal room laying on the floor trying to keep from throwing up from laughing. But that that was. Those were endless, long days. Mm. Rah, rah, float number 32. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and do 5, 6, and 10. I mean, mm. outrageous. Here's the thing that, that, that sets most in my memory. Uh, without being modeling, hopefully without being modeling, I came back from Vietnam. And it had been kind of a little rough trip. And as Jim well knows, I was a little disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> and when I got into town, uh, uh, a crew and I were at the, uh, uh, Fairmont and somebody said, there's a fire at the Rolf Center. And we went over and it was a fire in the closet. And we came back and we said, it's just fire in the closet. And we went back to the Fairmont. There's a fire at the Rolf Center. We go, couldn't see anything in the front. Pete Lambusi, remember the yes, photographer? Sure. He and I go around to the back, and all the women that jumped out of the building and died, died right at our feet. Uh. And that's why people have high-rise <laughs> sprinklers and all the buildings all around the world, because Pete's film went worldwide, and that became a law. What was it? Six weeks later, somebody gets a call. There's some gunshots at Howard Johnson's. Mm -hmm. So I'm out at City Hall in the mound, with Huey helicopters going across me with guys with <laughs> machine guns and, and shooting for three days. And then we got through with that. And I think we'll, a week later, uh, Sonny, one of the other cameramen and I were at the station. We got a call that the, uh, upstairs lounge had caught on fire and we got there and there were 30 people that had been burned to death. This was like in my first two months. And I remember going home and saying, I don't know. <laughs> Might want to go back know. to now. <laughs> or can go I back. go back to Homer? <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what sets up in your memories your most, uh, some of your more oh, memorable no. moments? There, there are really too many. I think that the bigger issue is this is a phenomenal news town. It was certainly before the storm. It, it is now. And people who don't travel a lot don't understand that. That there are many communities, although wonderful to live in, that are boring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are never going to be boring. No. And we are lucky to be in this industry in whatever capacity because we're living the history. Mm -hmm. But and, and we're living actually we lived all of us the transformation in television. We talk about film even before film, though, it was slides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you think how primitive and in a relatively short period of time now satellite trucks people have mm -hmm. on the back of their car. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> unbelievable what has happened in a really brief moment in time. Dave, when, well, for uh, a weatherman, for example, uh, grease pencils and uh, yes, stick right. em up suns and so forth to electronics <laughs> and, uh, for some of us, lightning bolts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and half the time they'd slide down the board and you'd end up with a high over a low and <laughs> <laughs> then you should have seen the forecast. But you know what I enjoyed when we opened the world's fair. Do you remember that? Yes. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. Oh, well, so I think uh, that we caused it to close. <laughs> <laughs> no, they I would, with, when people, 
see you on the street. Does anybody ever say, didn't you used to be on TV with Angela, Jim, and Garland, and you deny it? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> Just about every time. No, not at all. I never denied it. We had a family up there. Uh, we had a regular community. It was the most wonderful experience in my life. And uh, I will never, never forget it. In fact, before I came here, uh, I uh, picked up some uh, mementos out of my file and kind of refreshed my memory. And I've got your pictures, guys, in my office. Have they changed a bit either? Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the thing I want to remind everybody before we take this break, this isn't just a thing where we decide to get together and see who has the prettiest walker. Uh, <laughs> this uh, Tonight is the 50th anniversary of yes. WWL-TV. And I think 7 and 9, you're having a big yes, retrospective. And, and please let me say this because this man, uh, really, several people at the station, if you've lived in New Orleans for any period of time, please watch this because it is a history of New Orleans. Yeah, Dominic yes. Massa, who is our new executive producer, who has been with us since he was a Jesuit high school in khaki pants, I know he's watching, uh, and Robert Weaver, Bob Weaver, great photographer, have put together three hours of a phenomenal retrospective. And also Mike Schaefer, our assistant news director. But anyway, what they have picked, people will go, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then you realize how much has happened in this town and how, again, lucky we are. Even the tragedies, how lucky we are that we have had such interesting people and we continue to. But again, Dominic Massa needs major applause tonight. Mm -hmm. Taking a break, coming right back. The newest look in TV, Channel 4, WWL TV, Loyola University of the South. It's my happy privilege to be the first to welcome you to this inaugural program of WWL TV. Tonight is a memorable event in the history of WWL and Loyola University. I'm not really sure that what that was, but it was from very old, 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 mm -hmm. uh, long before I think even I got there. Oh, it was the first night clips. That's what it was. Wow. First night clips of, of WWL opening up. Uh, we whoa. missed that. Yeah. Well, yeah. rerun that one again. All right. Uh, uh, funny things that happened. I, I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned John T's restaurant down the block. <laughs> My best friend had been in the, the newspaper. Uh, and Alexander for saving a person uh, with the Heimlich, not the Heineken oh, yeah, maneuver, right. the Heimlich maneuver. Uh, I happened to be at John T's with one of our directors, Lee Huffman, <laughs> sitting in a booth. And there was a, a man, a wife, and a very heavy set girl between them. She began to joke, choke, and I thought, this is my chance. I'll be on the front pages of the newspaper. I jumped up, yanked her, knocked her father down, who was quite elderly, <laughs> yanked her out and did the Heineken <laughs> maneuver on her three times. The third time of which she was able to turn around and say, salad dressing. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't think anybody has ever died of choking, to my knowledge, anyway. And this is your next. <laughs> oh, gosh. I remember so many. I remember... You know, because I'm supposed to be the grammarian on the set, everybody always right. wants to know if, That's you know, right. if the subjects and verb agree or how do I put this or how do I put that. And I don't know if you'll remember this, Garland, but I use this when I talk uh, again in speeches. You would read a story. It was going into a break and you'd read a story. I got to try to get this right now. And you said in the copy, police are investigating a report of a foul odor from, <laughs> from Shalmet residents. And I started laughing. And we go into the break, and I'm dissolved in laughter. Gar Garland's like he's just read about an axe murder. You know? and, and he says, what's the matter? I said, you know what you just said? He said, what? You just said police are investigating a report of a foul odor from Shelmet residents. And he said, yeah? And I said, don't you mean police are investigating a report from Shelmet of a foul odor, from Shelmet residents of a foul odor? And you said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but you remember the video when I came back? It was probably something very, very scary. Uh, well, it was, I was in hysterical laughter because I realized what you had pointed out. Oh, God, Angela. I don't know if this is funny, but, um, you know, it's to, to get into this door, you have to hit buzzers and, you know, you have a big security system. Well, as you remember, we had absolutely no security whatsoever. None. And so we would, at, working at night, it was really just Garland, myself, and a producer. It was Phil Grossman at the time. Yeah. 
and a photographer. And that was it. And we put that whole 10 o'clock show together. Everybody would write it, put it together. And we used to laughingly say, boy, one day somebody's going to come in with a machine gun or axe or something like that. <laughs> I will never forget this. One night, a wacko walked in that door. Phil Grossman and Garland ran to the back. I am sitting there. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? When I tell you his eyes were going in the back. <laughs> Thank you for saving me. Well, I was, uh, this was a diversionary tactic. Sure it was. Whenever somebody's being mugged, the mugger always chases the <laughs> one that runs away. And I, Phil and I happen to be sissies also. But aside from that, it was a diversionary moon. Yeah, but I, this is, you're right. That wasn't very funny. That it was, was sad. Funny, but it was, it was, it was in very hindsight, sad. you know, it sort of made a statement. <laughs> but another time, you remember, you uh, married me anyway. Yeah, That's I did. really you know, sad. <laughs> <laughs> the, we, I was, I used to live in the quarter about a block and a half from the station. And after the six o'clock news one night, I wanted to run home, but it was dark. It was March or something. It was very dark. And I'm going home, and I'm halfway from the station to my little house, and I hear these pipes hitting. And I realize that it's a group of men coming, hitting pipes on the cement, and I saw my whole life flash in front of me. Well, they surrounded me. And I mean, literally, when it's not your time, I remember in my mind what I think saved me was I had my keys in my hand, and I, I just never said a word. They just kept talking and walking with me, hitting those pipes. And I just put the key in the door, which probably was dumb because I, then they would have had me in there. And for some reason, they didn't push me in and do anything. I ran to the phone. I called the newsroom. You answered, Garland. And ran I to said, the back. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is just what happened. I mean, I was in absolute shock. And so you and Gary, another uh, producer, come running down the street and Phil Johnson got in his car and went to it lunch. Was a, it was a no. It was a block and a half, and he got in his car. It was like a Sherman. T <laughs> was he the only one that had any brains? I mean, what the hell we would have done with guys with pipes on the street? All right, Dave, I'm going to give you a minute or so to think about your part in this. Coming right back. WWL New Orleans Big Eight Seventy AM. <laughs> Recognize Morgan the Magnificent in the beginning. It sounded like Dave's voice whenever he knew that we were on the set. Dave, what was your funniest moment that you remember? You and I uh, had a little bet, uh, and you bet that it was going to snow Christmas Eve, and I bet that it wasn't, and we That's went right. day after day, and the ante went up, up, up. And sure enough, uh, 10 o'clock, I was doing the show, and all of a sudden, snow started falling all over the set and all over me. I think that was one of the funniest things I'd ever had ever seen. Well, see, that, that, that should have proved to you right then you needed to get out of the business very quickly. <laughs> well, why are you still, I'm going to ask you all, why are you still here? I, I don't mean in the studio. I mean in New Orleans, in this area after all. I love it. Time. I love it. Uh, where can you find as much to do in the way of, uh, variety, uh, the, uh, the music, the restaurants, the people themselves, uh, the water, uh, the mild climate, uh, except the hot summers, of course, but uh, it's just a wonderful place to live. Let me give an example. I remember going to San Francisco not too long ago and also to Boston, both places. I figured I was going to have one of the best meals I've ever had. No comparison. No, of course mm -hmm. not. Angel? Uh, I think I'm still here because it is home. There are very deep roots. Um, I think there's a job to be done here. Uh, I think it's fascinating what we're going through. It's hard, and there are definitely days when you just shake your head, uh, whether it's living in the city or the uh, listening to, I mean, we all have our thoughts on leadership, the lack of it, the madness of this. But I think in the long run, it will have been such a ex life experience that I wouldn't want to miss. Jim? Well, I'll be honest with you. If I were younger and I had a younger family, I think I would look seriously about moving just because the conditions have changed so much, the market size has shrunk so much, and in those years you're so much more aggressive and you want to climb the ladder. But being at this stage of my life and in this stage of my career, 
I've got way too much invested in this place uh, emotionally, um, monetarily, in every other way. And I love it. I mean, it's home. I've spent 30 years of my adult life here. Mm -hmm. And like Angela said, there's no other place like it. I think the people are terrific. I think the lifestyle is fantastic. Yes, it's got its problems, but it's never dull. And it's in my soul. And I think it's in the soul of everybody who chooses to stay here. And I'm going to remind everybody, we've only got about a couple more minutes left, uh, why we're having the 50th anniversary, Channel 4 TV. Uh, big 7 to 9 tonight. Is 7 that to it? 9, there's two hours of the 50, not top stories, but 50 stories stories in 50 years and it, starting literally in the 50s to today and then the next hour is a whole hour of channel 4 the history of channel 4 and the characters who have been there and um, and this is something everybody has lived it's not just to watch channel 4 you're going to no, watch oh, your, no, no, no. the city's entire history no you're going to i think you're going to really be thrilled to see i mean we you mentioned the world's fair the World's Fair, the Pope coming to town, some of the tragedies we've had, but some of the incredible people. I mean, it, it's a happy thing. One, one final question. The question I have heard most, not just when I was at Channel 4, but afterwards, you and Jim, why never network? Everybody has always said these people should have mm -hmm. gone to network, should have been on network. Jim? Jim, Jim continues to ask himself. <laughs> that thought has gone through my mind four or five times just in the hour we've been together here. Uh, when people are nice enough to say that to me, uh, I tell them that uh, I quickly learned what a great opportunity I had here. I've seen a lot of people climb the ladder and fall off the top. Channel 4 gave me a unique opportunity to work for a station that's always been number one. I like to win, and I don't take any... I don't take any of the pride in that personally. I've been around a lot of great people like you people and a great television station. We've never lost a single newscast in the 30 years Sweet. I've been there. The chance to do the Saints games. That many places could you be the sports anchor of the number one television um, station in the market and also have the opportunity to be the play-by-play -play man for the only major league sports team. So it's been, a, it's been a very unique experience, and I realized that quickly on, and it got in my soul, and I didn't want to ever go anywhere else. Angela, about 30 seconds. I, I think because I... I learned what network really was, which was not having a home, not having roots, but seeing the world. And I think that having roots, I valued that more, and I have not one regret. Can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys coming up here. It, it, I never thought the four of us ever <laughs> sit up here again. When does the bingo game start? You know, you idea. know what, Christian, the guy you just yeah. met, the producer. You know what they call me here? What bingo? Bingo for old age. You don't like bingo? Exactly. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Great seeing all of you. Thank you. I'll Thanks, be watching Carla. tonight. Hope the city is too. 7 to 10? 7 to 10. Channel 4 TV News. Thanks, Garland. Thank you.